Hi, I'm happy to present Field Parser, a unified toolkit for deep learning based document image analysis. In this talk, I will share why and how we design Layout Parser through concrete examples and demos. And let's start our talk from the motivation part. In most document image analysis or DIA tasks, the inputs are document images and the outputs are extracted layout or text information. A comprehensive DIA pipeline will be used for getting the outputs. And recently, deep learning models have seen more application in the pipelines. As larger data sets and better computation infrastructure are becoming available, there are more and more research focusing on deep learning and improving the state of the arts. However, despite the exciting progress, there's a key limitation in this field. The model code exists in different GitHub repos and they are written using inconsistent deep learning backends with different APIs. As such, it is very hard to incorporate these models to existing DIA pipelines. And let me show you a concrete example. In DIA pipelines, the first step might be pre-processing, and you might need to download some code from GitHub repo A written in Java, and need to set up the environment accordingly. Subsequently, you need to use some different models for layout detection. And then you need to download the model from the repo B, which is written in Python and requires another environment to be installed. Similarly, for character recognition, post-processing, and storage, you might need to download code bases from different places and set up different environments. And this makes the research advances less accessible. For DI researchers, it's hard for them to reproduce and improve the models. It might also frustrate the end users as they might come from non-technical backgrounds. So we start to think what an ideal tool should be. Probably it should come with simplicity of design, but with comprehensive functionalities as well. It should be also customizable and extensible. And finally, it will form an open platform and community for practitioners in this field. As such, we design layout parser, and before talking about the details of design and implementation, let's start with a demo of key features in layout parser. Layout parser is extremely easy to install and use. In your command line, just type the following commands, and it'll be installed and ready to go. Layout detection is a common task in DIA. Layout parser comes with a rich repository of different models for layout detection. Just pick the most suitable model and load the target image, and it can accurately detect the document layouts just with a single line of code. Layout parser also provides handy support for character recognition. You can initialize the OCR engines in a similar way and run the detection as well. The handy export function helps you save the detected text into various formats like JSON and many others. Okay. Probably now you are curious about how Layout Parser is built. And let's take a closer look of its design and implementation. Behind the scene are a series of carefully engineered features, and they can be characterized into four key components. Let's start from probably the most important one, deep learning models for layout detection. As we mentioned in the previous slides, the biggest challenge is that there were just no standard ways for sharing and reusing existing models. Therefore, we built a series of standardized model APIs. And let's take a closer look. The first step to create a model is to specify the model configuration file. And it is highly semantic. It is composed of the name of the training data set and the model architecture. The standardized model API can be used to initialize different models. You can specify the deep learning backends, and we'll get back to this in the next few slides. And finally, you just need to run the same detection API for identifying layouts on any image. Okay, what if we want to make some changes to the models? Say, switch to a different model architecture. It's simple just need to change the model architecture name in the config file. How about switch two models trained on another dataset? It's similar, just change the dataset name in the config name. 
or if we want to do something even fancier, say changing the different backends and use models of a different architecture, sure, just change these two places and that's it. All other APIs stay the same. To make this API possible, we also pre-trained a series of models on different datasets of various layouts, which we refer as the model zoo. Okay, great. Now we can detect document layouts using these deep learning models. But in the IA pipelines, post-processing is usually required for getting the target output. And to this end, we build wires functions to support this goal. And we call these functions infrastructure APIs. Let's take a closer look. At the core of the infrastructure APIs are layout data structures. They come with convenient functions that can significantly simplify the post-processing steps. For example, let's say we want to select the layout regions in the left column. It is a very common task in DIA, and it is straightforward to implement using the other parser. Firstly, you need to get the image sizes, and then you can create an interval object that denotes the left column. And here is magic. We implement the filter by API that can easily select all the layout regions whose centers are inside the input, the left column. As we can see, all regions in the left column are selected. And finally, you can even sort the boxes vertically to get the correct reading orders. OCR is also an important step in DIA. As we have shown in the previous slides, the other parser comes with the support for OCR engines. But probably the most helpful part is that the other parser enables the interaction between detected layouts and OCR models. For example, we find that performing OCR within each individual layout regions can lead to better performance as each region has simpler layout structures and smaller image sizes. So in our parser, in order to do that, you just need to iterate the blocks inside the layout, cut the image into segments, and then run the OCR API to get the contained text. No data export, conversion, or reloading is required, and all this can be done with just using layout parser. Layout parser also comes with rich support of layout visualization for both debugging and presentation. For example, the drawbox function is used to create the layout visualizations shown on previous slides. And it can do even more. When debugging, you want to know the type of the regions? Sure, just set this parameter. Or even the index of the regions? Okay, add another parameter. And we can further style the boxes, changing the colors to high contrast and make it more visually accessible. Similar level of customization is also supported for draw text, which is used for displaying the OCR text based on their detected 2D positions on the page. Finally, Layout Parser supports a unified API for exporting and loading the data into different formats. Currently, we support general formats like CSV and JSON and more domain-specific formats like Pages, Mets, or HOCR will be added in the future updates. So far so good, but what if the models are not perfect and cannot fulfill our demands? Layout Parser supports different levels of model customization. There are several key factors that influence how we should perform model customization. Sometimes the target data might be similar or very different from the training data, which reduces the detection accuracy. Additionally, we might have different accuracy or efficiency requirements at different scenarios. For example, when performing DI at scale, we would like to have better efficiency even at a small cost of accuracy. Finally, the availability of the training data also matters. It takes more effort to customize the models without existing training data. Let's check the first scenario. In this case, we have similar target data, but we might need to have better efficiency. Therefore, we provide models from different deep learning backends. 
the Detectron 2 based models are relatively more accurate, while the efficient debt models excel at efficiency. The newly added pilot detection models have better overall accuracy and efficiency, and more backends will be available in the future updates. In another scenario, probably the target data might be somewhat different from the training data, and this means that model fine-tuning is required to achieve better accuracy. To this end, the parser is built with scripts that aims to streamline model fine-tuning. Finally, this might be the most challenging case, as the target dataset might have completely different layouts, and we have high demand for the model accuracy. And unfortunately, we just have non-available training datasets. In this scenario, we need to label some new dataset and retrain the model to achieve the ideal accuracy. Layout parser incorporates labeling toolkits from existing resources to streamline the labeling and improve efficiency. At last, when you have built a decent layout model or pipelines, probably you might want to share the work with the community and help with other practitioners. In this case, we built the layout parser open platform that supports sharing both layout models and DIA pipelines. Let's talk about sharing layout models first. We hope to build a big model zoo that covers a wide range of document layouts, while it also has a lot of choices for models trained on the same dataset. Here is a current layout parser model zoo. When models trained on different datasets are shared, it will enrich the document layout coverage. If we share models with different architectures, it increases the model choices per layout. Ultimately, we just hope to make it easier for finding the ideal model with the best accuracy or efficiency for the target layout. Right now, there are 14 models for six datasets in layout parser. With the help of the community, the number increases 100% during the past year, and we believe more models will be added in the future. On the other hand, layout parser helps streamline multiple steps in a DI pipeline, and it will be incomplete if only layout detection models are shared. As such, we also enable DI pipeline sharing, and here are some examples where layout parser helps with parsing tables in legal documents, or extract information from scientific papers, or digitizing a type of historical Japanese documents at scale. Okay, I believe I've covered all the key components of layout parser. There's a deep learning model for layout detection, and there's infrastructure APIs that simplifies the post-processing of the layout detection. Layout parser also supports customizing the different models, and it comes with an open platform for sharing both the models and pipelines. I'd also like to share our thoughts on possible future directions in these problems. The first one is about building more generalized models. Currently, we need to train different models for each of the datasets, and this is still not ideal. As more and more generalized and large models are available in deep learning, it will be very interesting to study how to have a single model that can work on multiple or even all the layouts. Another direction might be modeling documents using different signals altogether. Currently, doc image, layout, and text are usually separately modeled and used, and it would be very interesting to investigate how to design better mechanisms to model them jointly. In this talk, we present Layout Parser. It is a unified DI toolkit with open-the-box usage and integrated with different models. It comes with simple APIs with high level of customization, and most importantly, it is an open platform and everyone is welcome to contribute. Please consider to join the Layout Parser community, and we have different platforms for you to get the latest updates and share feedback with us. That's all for our talk. And I hope Leo Passer can be helpful for your projects. Thank you.